Hello and welcome to the History of Babylon 5. Today's episode, The First Ones. The First Ones were a group of ancient races that achieved sentience billions of years before any of the younger races such as the Mimbari, Human, or Centauri. The most well-known races among the First Ones are the Vorlons and the Shadows who, after most of their contemporaries passed through the rim into the void between galaxies, opted to stay behind and act as guardians and shepherds for the younger races. The First Born Before even most of the First Ones were young, there was a race in the galaxy born to be naturally immortal. The first among them to rise to importance was an individual named Lorian. He, along with a few others of his kind, found the Vorlons, the Shadows, and all the other races later known as the First Ones when they were infant races. Over time, Lorien and his kind helped them to grow and flourish, becoming vast and powerful beings. They created great empires, explored beyond the rim, and like Lorien's people before them, they even found younger races and became their teachers and guardians. Like all things, this did not last forever, and gradually, over the course of millions of years, most of the First Ones, along with the few of Lorien's people who did not perish through injury or illness, left the galaxy, never to return and some simply disappeared. Of those few who were left behind, Lorien was the only firstborn to remain, while among the handful of first ones that did not leave. The Vorlons and Shadows were the most numerous. As such, they took up the responsibility as the sole guardians and protectors of the younger races. Others, such as the Walkers of Sigma 957, took little interest in the affairs of the younger races, if they noticed them at all. Yet they stayed, hidden or asleep, waiting for the day that they would be needed. Lorien eventually withdrew and dwelt deep beneath the planet that would become known as Zahadun. Though the Vorlons and the Shadows followed dramatically opposite ideologies on which is the best way to help teach younger races, they both agreed to respect each other's position, maintain the balance between them, and abide by the rules of engagement. However, at some point, one or both of them decided that their way was right, and the only way, and so began a conflict of ideology that would last over a million years. Although the two Guardian races were technically at war, neither attacked the other directly, choosing instead to fight their battles through the hearts and minds of the younger races in their care. The Shadows fostered conflict and hardship with the belief that it would both breed stronger races and would weed out those too weak to survive. The Vorlons, on the other hand, believed in rigid order and obedience, and had they already manipulated many of these races to see them as beings of light, messengers of the universe, and even gods. Rather than letting nature take its course, the Vorlons actively adjusted the genetic evolution of certain races and, in time, even created telepaths that could be used to counter the shadow technology. For a time, the few remaining First Ones helped the younger races fight back against the destruction and chaos wrought by the shadows, but they were only ever beaten back, never destroyed. Each time that they were defeated and driven off their homeworld of Zahadu, having left some of their kind in hibernation there would always return believing that they were showing respect for Lorien. The last great war fought between the remaining First Ones took place around 10,000 years before the Third Age of Mankind, and it would be the last time that the First Ones would walk openly among the younger races. 9,000 years later, the Shadows once again returned to Zahadum and began to rebuild their power and stretch forth their hand to begin another war among the infant races. This time, however, they were defeated by an alliance of worlds, including the Mimbari, Hayek, Vorlons, and the few remaining First Ones. When the war was finished, it was thought that all the other First Ones, having grown tired of endless conflict, went away, leaving only the Vorlons behind. The Shadows were again driven back into hibernation on Zaha Doom, but not before seeding the galaxy with their remaining ships, hiding them away on uninhabited worlds where they could be retrieved again. The Vorlons, meanwhile, continued to advance their program of creating and developing telepaths among the younger races. In 2055, nearly 800 years after the Shadows had been beaten back, two Vorlons were sent to Earth to advance telepath development to the next stage, setting up a base in the Gambertsev Mountains in Antarctica. They began abducting humans and implanting them with the next stage of telepath gene, cultured from their Nephilim. Their activities were discovered by allies of the Shadows, who came to Earth to stop them. 
One pair was killed in the ensuing fight, its death scream felt in the dreams of hundreds of telepaths across the planet, and a piece of its consciousness managed to escape into the mind of a human who had been prepared for just such an eventuality. The second Borlon, after destroying all trace of the Antarctica base, retreated into its ship to hide near the Venusian South Pole. The results of the latest genetic implementation began apparent even to the humans themselves. With the first verifiable telepaths appearing in 2115, however, they would not be aware of the Vorlon tampering for years to come. In 2245, the Vorlon Empire sent Kosh to secretly contact Dukat, chosen one of the Membari Grey Council, and warn him that the ancient enemy was returning and that the humans, a race unknown to the Membari, would be instrumental in the coming war. By this time, many of the Grey Council had begun to doubt or even disbelieve the prophecies of Valen that the Shadows would first return to their homeworld before moving against them, and the Anna Shock. And the Anna Shock, charged for 1,000 years with watching for the Shadows' return, had been reduced to a handful of dedicated yet aging rangers with little in the way of resources they needed. After the Anna Shock, Na Lennon's request for additional support was turned down by the Council, Dukat took advantage of the situation and declared that the Council would go to Zaha Doom and see for themselves. Disaster struck when an Earth Alliance Explorer division, probing the border of Mimbari space, stumbled across the Valen Thaw en route to the Rim. The captain of the lead ship panicked at the sight of the Mimbari cruiser, closing with its gun ports open and not understanding the gesture of respect for what it was. Opened fire, damaging the ship, killing Dukat and beginning the Earth Membari War. The war was ultimately stopped just short of annihilation of the human race. In January 2257, the interplanetary expedition vessel Icarus landed on Zaha Doom, prematurely awakening the shadows and setting in motion the second shadow war before the Vorlons were fully ready. Once awakened on Zaha Doom, the shadows again began to rebuild their power quietly recalling their allies and ships to them. Their re-emergence did not escape the attention of the Vorlons, as Kosh had observed the Icarus's landing via a probe left behind to monitor Zaha Doom. Both sides moved quickly to consolidate the younger races to their side, and it didn't take long for the Shadows to recognize the humans as the key to the latest conflict. They then managed to gain an influence, directly and otherwise, with certain factions within the Earth Alliance. They made use of ambiguous politicians, such as then-Vice President Clark, looking to create a new order and the elements within the Psychor, essentially hijacking the Vorlon-inspired breeding enhancement program set forth by Dictator Vossett some 60 years prior. When the war finally came, events progressed as both sides expected until December 2260. Captain Sheridan, the chosen leader of the Army of Light, traveled to Zaha Doom, managing to inflict serious damage and encountering Lorien. The Vorlons took advantage of the Shadow's weakened state and began striking directly at their followers and allies, wiping out whole planets, colonies, anywhere that the Shadows had found influence. The Shadows soon responded in kind, each side intent on settling their eons-long dispute over order and chaos. The younger races soon found themselves caught between two unstoppable forces and would have fallen apart if it were not for the rallying cry from Babylon 5 of Sheridan returning from the dead by Lorien. After calling together the very last lingerings of the first ones, including the walkers of Sigma 957, the Shadows and Vorlons were finally persuaded at the Battle of Corinda VI to stop their endless cycle of war and depart with Lorien and the others out beyond the Rim though a few briefly stayed behind to wait for John Sheridan to join them at his passing. Thank you for watching the history of the first ones. Special thanks to The Babylon Project for all information you heard today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you can. If you have, thank you, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.